Hi, I'm Laura Ray, and tonight we're talking about budget-friendly makeup. I'm so excited that you're here. If you're in the live stream, welcome. If you're watching the replay, I would like to welcome you too. And I'm going to be talking about two amazing brands at the drugstore tonight, and that is Rimmel and L'Oreal. I have used L'Oreal for so many years. I have some great favorites to share with you, but let's talk about the least expensive product here tonight that I want to show you, and it's $2.39. And it's this amazing bronzer from Rimmel. I've used this for years, and even though I try a lot of bronzers, I find that this really works just as great as any that I've spent a lot of money for. Now this one is Sun Bronze and it's what I'm wearing now. Now I want to make sure you know that all the links for all of these products are in the description beneath the video and I appreciate you using those links because that helps support the live stream and support my channel so I really appreciate it. And welcome to Lydia. I'm so glad you're back in. We had a little issue with the internet, but hopefully that's worked out now. And um, I want to go on and talk a little bit about the blush that I brought because I feel like Rimmel is a superstar when it comes to these blushes. And they're only around the $4.25, $4.50 price range. This one is Wild Card, and that's what I'm wearing right now. I love this shade. I barely had to tap my brush into it before I had this on my cheeks. And I think if anybody saw me out in my everyday life and I said, oh, how do you like my new Charlotte Tilbury or my Fenty or my Huda Blush, any of these big companies, great brands, they would say, they believed it. This goes on beautifully. It lasts for hours. So I'm loving this. And then another shade from Rimmel that I tried that I love is this one called Third Base. And this is a little softer shade. I'll pull the other one up so you can see both of them side by side. This is a lot softer and I'm. it's just amazing. I would love to hear in the comments any of your favorite Rimmel products that you've bought. And Leslie, welcome back. I said I spent and got high speed internet and still we had a little internet issue, but I really appreciate you ladies coming back in and hanging in there with me through these times with the internet. Now, besides blush, Rimmel has come out with so many great eyeshadow products that look a lot like many of the shades from Urban Decay. So I want to share these with you because they're all under $10 and it's a great way to play and have fun with your makeup. I have found shades that I never would have tried had it been an expensive palette through trying less expensive palettes. So one I want to share with you that's brand new is this one. It's, it's their Magnify Eyes line, and this is the Wow Edition. And this is their latest of shadows, and I've been playing with these, and I'm loving them. I always have loved purple shadow. I think it just looks so beautiful on the eyes, and you can see there's some beautiful purples here such a wide range of shades. Now this palette is only $6.81 on Amazon. So think that is less than like one shadow from some brands. It really is incredible. Hello to Becky. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for your kindness, your support. I really appreciate all of you ladies. And Brandy says she loves Rimmel. Um, oh, and she's talking about a highlighter that she says is very similar to one from Charlotte Tilbury. That's great. Hi, Trish and Penelope. I'm so glad. Welcome to the makeup party. This is just our own little makeup club right here on YouTube. And I'm so happy you're here tonight. And those of you watching the replay, make sure you comment and let us know 
your favorite Rimmel products. Now this one I bought because Urban Decay came out with a palette of like crimson shades, but all those palettes can run $40, $50. And I just wanted to try the shades a little bit. I knew they weren't shades I would wear every day. So instead of buying a more expensive one, I bought this one and it's really beautiful. I like these shades. Um, besides the crimson, you've got sort of a nude uh, gold in it too to mix. So they always have such a neat variety with these shadows. And what I have found is they're very pigmented surprisingly pigmented, more than some that are expensive shadows. Now, another palette I bought, uh, brought that I bought, I wanted to share with you is, this one is called Reloaded. And look at these shades. I mean, they're, the reason I bought it is really, I love this plummy shade, but this gave me a chance to experiment with some brighter shades on my eyes. And earlier I had a question in the community post about suggestions that I had for deep set eyes for eyeshadow. And what a coinky dink because my video this Saturday is tips for beginners for eyes, working with the eyes. So I hope you'll tune in for that because I, uh, you know, just really shared all the things I've learned over the years to help with applying eyeshadow on mature eyes at 57. I've been mature for a while now. So I really have learned a lot. Hello to all of you, Disa. She says she's a new subby, and I appreciate you so much, all of you. And hello from Key Largo. Wow, I love the Keys. Uh, my parents took us many times on trips to the Keys and Big Pine Key was one of my favorite keys. I went to sea camp there at Big Pine Key. So it's just, all the keys are amazing. We're so glad you're here. So those are three of the palettes. Let me show you a couple more I have. Now this one really speaks to me because I love warm shadows. And this looks so much like the Naked Heat palette that they came out. Again, so many of these look like Urban Decay and have very similar shades. There's all kinds of stuff if you Google it, where you'll see comparisons of here's Urban Decay, here's Rimmel, and how similar they are. And all of these palettes are under $10. The one, uh, the blush one I'm gonna show you that I really like, this is only $6.99. Such a great deal. And they do come with a great brush, the one that just fell on the floor. <laughs> But this, don't you love lives where things are falling on the floor? Uh, this is the brush that it comes with, and it has that long tip like the ones I love so much I've been talking about for applying eyeshadow, and then a little bit of a brush on the end. So these are actually not useless. They're very helpful. And these blush shades, I think they're beautiful. I like to, on my eyes most days, go in with sort of a mid-tone and just go right onto the lid and sort of blow it out. Another tip that I do talk about in my Saturday video is I take this kind of a brush and go like in my crease here and sort of just pull it out. And that really just gives you a very soft, diffused look. And then if I feel I need to, I will get a makeup brush just to go over the edges. And then you get a beautiful look. I think um, too dark of shades all over the eyes can really make deep set eyes look uh, receded. And so I really like these mid-tones. They're very easy to work with and I always get a nice look when I use those. And Patrice says, thanks, Laura, can't wait for Saturday. Oh, I'm so excited. I love doing the eye videos because I think that is probably the trickiest thing, right? As we age, our eyes, it's the first place I notice signs of aging on myself. I don't know where you ladies first noticed it, but I noticed first like little creases under the eyes those kinds of things. That's really what I first noticed on myself. 
And it is, Brandy says, eyeshadow is so hard to master. Do you always wear eyeshadow? I would like just to be able to do it quickly. And Brandy, that's why I would say go with that mid-tone. Because if you take the mid-tone, um, what I like to do also, I don't have a fluffy brush with me right now, but I'll sort of show you. I'll take the brush, and I talk about it in the video on Saturday. Go into your shadow and work the shadow into the brush first. If you go right to the eye, it can get so messy and be very frustrating. So if you take that brush, work the shadow in, then go right into the center of your eye and just sort of circle it out and it just diffuses beautifully. And then, like I said, you can go over the edge and just sort of pull out like this. And then you get a really soft look. And that is so easy. And B. Walker, hello, she says, have said it before, so admire you for being so chill when something hits the floor. I love it. Thank you so much for your sweet comment. And uh, Lydia says she noticed changes in her eyes at well as well. So yeah, I think that's the first place that we notice aging. And at least that was that way for me. Now, uh, Cat Lady says, can you recommend a good shimmery eyeshadow stick? Hmm. Let me think about that. Kiko has some great sticks. And um, I would say they have mastered that really well. I actually bought those nude sticks, which are pretty pricey. I bought them on sale at Ulta a couple of years ago. And I actually found they made my eyelids look very uh, much worse. They made them look much worse than what they were. And actually made my lids almost look crepey when they weren't that crepey. So I find that what you might really like is something like Revlon. I talk about that in the video on Saturday. I have um, uh, a video about the eyes, like I was saying, and the Revlon, those are very thin. You don't want something that goes on the lid thick. It will make the eyelids look very heavy. Uh, and if you have any crepiness or loose skin, it will accentuate it. So, um, you know, I'm excited. I want to try It Cosmetics just came out with some eyeshadow sticks. I don't know if any of you have tried them. Uh, one thing that I have found with the eyeshadow sticks it's best if I keep the shimmery part in the center of the lid, right here on the mobile lid because that's the smoothest area on my lid. I find that I have more crepiness towards the edge where the skin is pulling down and more in the inner corner of my eye. So I keep the shimmery, it still gives you that look, but I keep it in the center and try to keep the rest matte. So I hope that's helpful, Cat Lady. And that answers your question. Now, I want to share a few other star products from Rimmel that I really would recommend to anyone that's my friend like you are to try. And one, I get a lot of questions about eyeliner, and I talk about that in the video also. I don't want to give too many spoilers away, <laughs> but I talk about that. But this is one of the regular eyeliners, not liquid, that I would recommend, and it's from Rimmel. It's their Exaggerate Waterproof Eyeliner. Now, what's great about this, it goes on really smooth, and then on this end has a little smudger, and you can just go right in that lash line and sort of smoke it out. And I find when I do that, it really lasts beautifully. I have used these Rimmel for years, and I really think they're probably one of the top ones at the drugstore for not smudging. That's a problem, too, as we get older, is that as things start drooping, we get a lot of smudge in the under eye. At least I do, the way my eyes are shaped. When I smile and lift up, and then I'm not smiling, I will get it drooping into the under eye area. So I find this is one of the best eye pencils that I have uh, tried. 
Now, two other things from Rimmel I want to share is this gloss. This is so underappreciated. This is Rimmel's Stay Glossy. Now, this is sort of a famous shade out of all of them, Blushing Belgraves. Have any of you ladies tried this shade? It's a beautiful sort of pinky nude with sparkle in it. And these glosses are not real sticky, just really gorgeous on the lips. Like if I put this on, people will think I'm wearing high end. This is one of the best glosses at the drugstore. And let's see, Blushing Belgraves on Amazon, in my Amazon store is $2.39. That's how inexpensive. I, I told you, I have two products that are $239. The bronzer that I talked about at the beginning and that uh, lip gloss is also $2.39. Incredible. Now, this shade is also great. Back Row Smooch. Don't you love their names? The names they come up with. But this is like a pink, but it's got an iridescence to it sort of a unicorn kind of look to it. I really love it. These are great toppers. I don't wear these alone. I put them on top of my lipstick. So I really love those. And last but not least, I always get a lot of questions about bleeding lipstick, going into lines. Well, this is the matrix here. This is a clear pencil clear lip pencil. So if you don't really like wearing regular lip liner around your lips, you don't want to color, this is clear. And there's very few companies at the drugstore, trust me, I have studied them, <laughs> that make clear. Maybelline is one of them. They have a clear lip liner. And then Rimmel. And I've repurchased this many times and love it. Now, I have a little tip for you on this. This also is a wrinkle filler. Yes, a wrinkle filler. So what I do is the little lip lines that I have around my lips, I take the pencil and I just color them in, like fill them in. And because this is a little bit waxy, it's sort of like spackle for your lip lines. So I do line around my mouth, but then I go in and say I have a little line here. I'll just go like this, go back and forth, and then maybe tap it in if I see a little bit of the product, and then you're done. So this is fantastic. So if you've never tried a clear, regular lip liner, I suggest trying that out. I think every woman over the age of 50 could probably benefit from this product. That's for sure. And B. Walker says, I agree with lip toppers can take a color and make it so much better, like butter. You are so right. And Bunny says, hello, Laura. Bunny from cold western Massachusetts. She loves Rimmel. That's great, Bunny. I'm so glad that you enjoy Rimmel. And I ne never hear about them on YouTube. It is rare. I did hear Stephanie Marie the other week talking about one of the blushes. She's one of the only people that I've even heard talk about Rimmel. And they have some new products I'm gonna try out to share with you. They've just come out with um, a whole new brand, a clean brand of makeup, their version of a clean brand. They have a mascara, they have like a serum -y kind of foundation. I think that is gonna be the big thing this year. I just keep seeing one company after another coming out with these serums. So I'm really, yeah, B. Walker says, what, a clear lip liner? Yes, they have them and they're great. It's like putting a line in the sand for that lipstick so it does not bleed. And I really think all of us could benefit from it. It's so affordable, and I hardly ever hear anyone talk about clear lip liners. So I am really excited to share that with you. I talked about it on my channel uh, probably years ago and haven't spoken about it recently, so I wanted to bring it up since we're talking about Rimmel tonight. Let's move on now to L'Oreal. I have been a L'Oreal fan for since I was a teenager, since probably the dermatologist recommended me using their foundation because it was affordable and he said it wouldn't break me out. 
So I have tried, you know, hundreds probably of L'Oreal products. So I want to talk first about foundation. I am wearing tonight this brand new one from L'Oreal. I've mentioned it in some of my other videos. It's been out a very short time and it's from their Age Perfect line and it's their four in one tinted balm. And so I bought two shades. I really wasn't sure. It's very hard when you're just looking at these photographs. I'm sure you can feel what I'm saying right now. It's very hard to pick a foundation online. And so I bought two. I, this one right here is the light. And then it comes in the shade uh, just lighter medium. These are the shades. Now, I am wearing the medium tonight. I went a little darker because I knew the lights would wash me out. But really, for my everyday life, the light would have been a perfect match for my skin right now. Now, I want to talk about it because it's the most unique formula I've about ever seen. It is really off the chain because it looks like a cream, right? You're thinking of sort of a thicker, heavier cream. It feels like water, literally like water. And I'm going to show you, like if you look at it, you go, hey, that's pretty good coverage there, right? And then you rub it the minute it hits your skin, it feels like water. It's amazing. So it feels very light on my skin. And you can layer this and it will layer. So I start off very soft with it, just sort of covering what I need to cover. And then when I see like my broken capillaries, any of these areas that aren't covered, I go back with it. But I am really enjoying this. I have not tried one product yet that I could say is similar to this. There's nothing. There's nothing at the drugstore that has the feeling of this that I've ever tried and I've pretty much tried it all. So it comes in a glass jar, really nice. Now this uh, runs around $15.48 on Amazon. And I can say, I think this will last me a very long time because I don't seem to need a lot to cover my face. Uh, I really love it. It says it's infused with a firming serum uh, with, uh, I don't really go for all that. I don't buy these. What I do notice though, with all these skincare ingredients that they're putting into this makeup now is that it applies better. It is like a whole new ball game because most of you know that, you know, for many years, women have put a little drop of oil in their foundation. So it spreads nicer and it looks prettier on the skin. We've been doing our own DIYs forever, right? So now the makeup companies, they're getting on the bandwagon and they're putting all this skincare into their formulas. Am I going to rely on that for my skincare? No way. But do I enjoy the way now that my makeup is applying? 100%. Much easier to apply. So I'm really excited about it. Um, Chanel says, is that foundation long wearing? They don't promote it as long wearing, but I thought it wore beautifully on my skin. As it would sort of melt into the skin throughout the day, it looked very natural. I love the look of it. I've worn it many days to work and I really like it. So I'm happy with that purchase. I think it's worth a try. And it's just something really fun to try because like I said, I don't see anything else on the market like it. It's very unique. And so um, I want to talk about this foundation. This is another new one from L'Oreal. They really just hit gangbusters at the beginning of 2022 with two new foundations. And this is their true match but with a hyaluronic serum in it. So I have tried so many of their foundations. I really like this. It's a dropper bottle. And I know a lot of YouTubers, I know Angie talked about it. She said she really loved the look of it. Uh, Lisa J from Lisa J Makeup, BK Beauty, she talked about it and how much she liked it. 
I've really enjoyed it. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the shade I picked. I like it, but I'm going to look into trying another shade. I think this sort of is, makes me look a little sallow. I don't really like the shade so much. Now the one I chose, uh, let's see, they have everything covered up here. Well, I, oh, light medium, three, four light medium. And um, it has the dropper like this. And I did love the way it spread on my skin. I love the way it looked on my skin, except like I said, I think I can maybe find a little better shade match. But I worked with it. By the time I put on my blush and powder and all of that, it still looked great. So uh, Cat Lady says, I like the L'Oreal True Match, but haven't tried that one. I've tried both and I think you will like this. Again, it goes back to how this makeup applies. With the new skincare ingredients that they're adding into these formulas, they apply a lot easier. And I think they're a lot better too for beginners. People starting out in makeup or coming back to makeup, I think they're gonna find that their makeup looks a lot prettier and is easier to apply. And Brandy says, I think with the True Blend, you have to mix two together to get the right color. And Brandy, that was my experience when I tried the regular one. I had a couple of shades that I bought and I would mix them. And then I came up with something that I really like. So that's a great suggestion, Brandy. And I agree, I'm gonna keep this one and maybe buy another shade and see if I like the look of the shade on my skin a little bit better. And Lydia says, I want to try adding one drop of oil to my under eye before applying my color corrector. Yeah, Lydia, I love that idea. It's uh, what I have found in my own experience is just make sure you give your under eye area enough time to dry. Sometimes when we put that oil and mix it in the under eye, then things don't sort of stabilize and it gets uh, messy in the under eye, especially if you stay away from makeup in the under eye area, like no lower lash mascara, no liner, I think you should be good. But what I used to do is put like a little bit of jojoba oil and give it some time to dry and then go in with my products. So uh, Chanel says, I heard that it has a high alcohol content. Um, I'll look into that, Chanel. I didn't find it drying at all on my skin, but I know some of the foundations that they make do have the alcohol in them. Now, I want to show you some other L'Oreal favorites. Now, what I'm wearing on my eyes is this palette that's been out forever. This is their nude palette. I This is a repurchase. I had it. I gave it away at some point when I was... Uh, going through my makeup, maybe to my daughter. I give a lot of makeup to her. And then I missed it. I kept seeing at the drugstore and saying, why did I ever give that away? I love this palette. So I repurchased it. And here's the good news. When this came out, I think at Walmart, it was around $15. At the regular drugstore, 20 now you can get this on Amazon, and I think, let me see, I think it was around $12 for the palette. I'm looking, because I wrote a couple prices down, and I think that it's, yeah, $12. And think of it, that's the price of maybe one shadow that you can get from uh, other brands like Anastasia, these kind of brands. So um, I love the way this looks on the eyes. This is what I'm wearing now. I did such an easy look, such an easy look. And so um, anyway, yeah, so I'm, what I did tonight was I went in to this shade right here and it again is like a mid-tone and I used some of this and I use the deeper shade as a liner and that's a great thing to do too is take your deeper shade and you can use it as a liner you could go on top of a liner like you could use the Rimmel and then go on top of it with powder uh, so there's so many possibilities there 
and analyzing my life says, oh my goodness, Laura, that was the first palette I ever owned. I got it on sale at Rite Aid. Isn't that funny? I, it, we remember things like that. Uh, Liz says, I apply Laneige to my lips and the residual is smudged under my eye to allow the concealer, concealer to glide better. That's awesome. What a great tip. And uh, B. Walker says, score 12 bucks. It is a score because there's so many beautiful shades in this. This, when it came out, came out around the time. Now think back, ladies, about seven years ago when the Urban Decay Naked Palette was all anyone talked about on YouTube. Any channel you turned into practically, except maybe mine, were talking about that palette. And I thought, wow, $49, that's a fortune. And so that's why I wanted to try this. And I got such beautiful results with it that I thought, wow, you know, I ended up later on when it was on sale getting the Naked Palette and there were some amazing sales during the holidays. And I always try to put sales that I see for things like that because I do love Urban Decay. Don't think I don't love them. I love their shadows. And sometimes I see great deals and I post them there for you because I know some of you are like me and you love certain palettes from them and might want to try them if they were about half the price. So um, that's they're great shadows and I love that. Now another product that was out so long that I didn't try until recently is this Lumi Bronzer. And it is beautiful. Now, one of the reasons I didn't try it was when I saw it and looked at it, it's got like a little bit of gold glitter in it. And I thought, I am not going to like anything that glittery. I don't mind shimmer, but I don't necessarily want glitter. I don't want to look like a kindergarten project with glitter all over, you know. So I didn't buy it. And then I kept hearing great things about it. So I went ahead and purchased it. I never see that glitter. It looks beautiful on the skin. This is a great product and look at the size of it. So it is wonderful. I would definitely recommend it. That's why I'm talking about it tonight it has become a favorite and I think it's a great product. Now, another one from L'Oreal that I bought because so many people had said it was a dupe for Charlotte Tilbury and everybody's really into the highlighted cheekbones is this Lumi Glotion. Now the great thing about this is you can not only use it as a highlighter, but you could mix some into your foundation that you wear that's maybe matte. Maybe you have something that's a little too matte and you want a little glow, just put a drop of this and mix it in and it will be absolutely stunning. This is a great product. I'm gonna, I didn't put any highlighter on tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some on my glass palette so you can see it. And I'm gonna put some on. Now they came out with different shades. The one I have right with me tonight is Light Glow, number 902 but they had a medium glow. They had different ones for different skin tones. So if you have a deeper skin tone, they do have deeper colors. Now, if you look at it, this is very champagne looking, right? Let me just grab my mirror for a minute and I'm gonna put a little bit on my cheekbones so you can see. Just dab it in and pat. Wow, that does look a lot like, woo, boy. <laughs> this looks a lot like the uh, Flawless Filter. That really did give me a glow, didn't it? I'm gonna just put a little on this cheek. And wow. Now, you could even put a dab on the lid. Let's try that. I'm really going off the chain tonight. There we go. Look at the difference. I'm going to close my eyes a second so you all can see. That's really pretty, isn't it? I really like that. And then I'll put some. I got to have a match. There we go. Wow. I love that. I think it's such a great product and so affordable. Like I said, it has come way down in price since when it came out. 
So this is one that I love, the Lumic Lotion. And like I said, all the links are beneath the video, just like they are for any other video. So this is in my Amazon store. Everything's right there, easy for you to find. Now let's talk about my favorite makeup product, lipstick. So one iconic shade from uh, L'Oreal that they have changed the packaging over and over. They come out with like special limited edition packaging and everything is Fairest Nude. Do any of you ladies own Fairest Nude? Um, it is such a beautiful nude. It has to me a little bit of a pinky peach tone to it. It's beautiful. I know some people are not big fans of L'Oreal lipstick because of the scent. And some of them I've noticed that they've come out with in the last couple of years, I don't notice having that same L'Oreal scent. But this is a beautiful shade, Ferris Nude. If you love nude lipstick, it is fantastic. Now, another one about Mm, I don't know how long ago. Maybe it's been close to a year now. Time flies when you're having fun. But L'Oreal came out with this whole new line of lipsticks. It was like new confident, new excessive, all this. So this is number 178. And I'll draw that on my hand. Now that's much more peachy, as you can see, a much more peachy nude. This line, these lipsticks to me, there was a shade in here, and it may be this one, 171 New Confident. They have a shade that is just a total dupe for Pillow Talk. And once I color this on, I'll know whether it is. This looks very similar. This might have not been the one. There's, I bought several of these shades, but these lipsticks have that same Charlotte feel and they're just beautiful. I love this line that L'Oreal came out with. The packaging is beautiful. The wear on these is great. And so um, that's what I'm wearing tonight. What I'm wearing on my lips right now is 178. That's the shade that I'm wearing. But I am really in love with these. I think they're great lipsticks and so affordable. Lipstick is one area where I think we can save so much money because the drugstore, they have some hits. They nail it when it comes to lipstick. I really don't feel you ever need to get a high-end lipstick unless there was such a unique shade that the drugstore just doesn't have because what I found is the formulas that they're coming out with now are absolutely amazing. Now I have three other lipsticks to share with you tonight. And these are new from L'Oreal, and they're really a unique formula. They, let me see, the name of them is, uh, they're the Glow Paradise line, and they're called Hydrating Balm and Lipstick. So it's like part balm, part lipstick. And I know one of my friends here on YouTube, uh, one of my subscribers, uh, Sharon, she had written me and said, oh, have you tried those? I'm really loving them. And so these are really neat. Uh, again, it's like a combination balm and lipstick all in one. So this shade here, this is 160 Cherry Wonderland. And I thought that was really a unique shade. It's bright. It's not really a red, even though they say cherry. It's a little more peachy to me than anything, but they last very well on the lips. They're not super long lasting because they are so moisturizing, but they feel great on the lips and are easy to reapply. Now, this one is 120 Blush Fantasy. So I'll show you that. Now that is like my comfort zone. That is the shade I turn to. What kind of shade do you like? What is your like go-to shade that just attracts your eye and you're drawn to? For me, these rosy shades like this have always been real favorites of mine. B. Walker says, I've always loved L'Oreal lipstick. 
haven't tried that line, love the tube feel. It does feel quality, color payout and longevity is great. And I just love them. And I think uh, Brandy's talking about the Revlon Color Stay Matte Crayon. I love those, Brandy. Those are amazing. Uh, Revlon really knocks it out of the park, in my opinion, with their lipsticks. And they don't get enough appreciation. That's my opinion. And B. Walker says, it is appearing very orange to me. You're right, it is much more orange. And when you look at it in the lights, the lights sort of change the look of it too a little bit. Now this one is Rose Mirage. And this number is 150, this one here. And it's a lot lighter than the other one I just showed you. And... Um, so if you just like more of a soft, uh, I would call that more of a pink than rose because it's just really light. That's number 150. But I love these. They feel great on your lips. They feel like you're putting a very moisturizing lip balm on, but you get more of a lipsticky look. And, um, you know, one thing... I was listening to Kimberly today from Pretty Over 50, and she said she's really gotten away from wearing much gloss. She wears more of a matte lipstick because she feels at her age, she's, I think, 65 or 66, it bleeds into lip lines. And I can see definitely where that would be an issue with gloss. I was thinking of her when she said that, that something like this might be the answer because it's sort of a, you get a glossy look, but yet it's a lipstick and I don't find that they bleed. So I think if you're looking for something that will give you that gloss feel without wearing a gloss, then these are great from L'Oreal. Again, this is their uh, Glow Paradise line. They have this whole line of Paradise products and the packaging is pretty too. If you take a look at that, that's really pretty luxe looking in my opinion. And B. Walker says, do you lean to matte cream or pearlized? Hmm, that is tough. But as far as me, I would love to hear what you ladies like. I really um, do everything. A lot of times I'll wear a cream and then buy a pearly looking lips, lipstick. I think CoverGirl does very well with that. They have a lot of lipsticks that have sort of, we used to call them frosted, right? That's what we called them in the 70s and 80s. Oh, a frosted lip. And I like to put that right in the center. And that sort of gives my lips a fuller look. Uh, makes it look more dimensional than such a flat look. I think the problem sometimes with matte is it can give the lip sort of a, just a very flat look. Now another one I like that's so inexpensive, it's like a dollar, is Wet n Wild. They make a, one, a lipstick called, I think, Dark Pink. And it's not dark pink, it looks like a very light pink. I've repurchased that probably five times, and I just put that right in the center. And it's got a nice pearlized look to it, and that's like 99 cents. So that is a really good one. And um, so that's what, yeah, frosted hair too. Yes, when I first used to get my hair highlighted, do you remember the caps? They put the cap on, that was like the most painful thing ever. It was like a root canal, but for your hair and they would just rip that hair through. That's probably why I had a lot of hair damage. And then they would put the coloring on. Oh my gosh, that was torture. That really was rough. I, when they went to foils, I was just dancing in the streets. I was so happy. Um, so I think that, yeah, I love, uh, Gina says, I loved frosted lipsticks in the 70s. Oh, I think they're beautiful. And again, they don't call them frosted anymore. They say shimmer, right? But same thing. And CoverGirl, like I said, Wet n Wild and CoverGirl make some really inexpensive, great ones if you're looking for that for the center of the lips. I think they do a fantastic job with that. 
Yes, and B. Walker says yes, and a crochet needle gizmo. Yes, they take that needle and pull that hair out. And I would always see all this hair breakage. It was the pits. Mm. So I'm glad they use foils now, and we have come out of the dark ages with hair. Hopefully uh, they can do that and make dentistry a little less painful too. So do you ladies have any questions before we close tonight? That's pretty much everything that I wanted to share with you tonight. And uh, April says, yes, I bought the Wet n Wild ones too. I love their lipsticks and that's how I've found shades that look good on me. Because when you see a lipstick, sometimes you're like, I don't wanna pay $10 for that if it's a wasted $10, right? Because it's only worth it if it's something we're gonna really enjoy. So I'm very um, on the fence sometimes about trying colors because I don't want to waste my money. So I love Wet n Wild lipsticks because I've bought tons of them for a dollar a piece. The ones with the little black tube and the clear on the top. And I tried shades and I found things I never ever would have tried that way. And that's a great thing to do with these shadows too is to get a palette that's not as expensive like the Rimmel and try it out. Take it for a test drive and see. Play with your makeup. Just have some fun and you will find shades that you never would have tried if you were investing in these expensive palettes. So it's a great way to see what looks great on you. And another tip I would say is try it out and take a picture of yourself. I mean, we were from the generation where we just didn't want to have our picture taken or take pictures of ourselves, And now with these phones, it just makes it so easy. So there have been times I've done a look and I really felt unsure whether I liked it or not. So I would just take a selfie and then look at it. And sometimes I go, what was I thinking? And then other times I've found shades where, wow, that really looks a lot better than I thought it was going to. So that is a good thing is try out your makeup and then take some pictures. And the great thing is when we don't like the photos or we like it, we send it to someone. If we don't, we just hit delete. That's all, no harm done. And Isabel says hours to find a brow shade that doesn't look too dark. Do you go lighter? Yes, Isabel, um, I have been really playing with my brows lately. I think brows are so challenging, but I would say always lean on light. I was playing around with shades the other day and I legit did my makeup to go to school. And when I got there, I thought I looked like Rocho Marx. I mean, the brows, I just did way too much. So I would always say lighter is better. I do go heavier on the tail because like most women over 50, and I talk about this in the video on Saturday, most women over 50 don't have much hair left in the tail of the brow. Mine has gotten better using the castor oil. I am still doing that, putting it on my brows and my lashes, trying to get them healthier. And I have found that putting the castor oil on my brows has helped me a lot. And now I notice I have several more hairs on the end of my brows. But to me, brows seem like one of the most challenging areas to do. And I would always say go lighter. I tend to use a blonde pencil or taupe. And the taupe seems to work pretty good. And I see Brandy says, do you use contour on your cheeks? Sometimes. Now tonight what I did, I don't usually for every day, Brandy. Um, but if I feel I look dull or I look tired, sometimes I'll use bronzer, sort of like a contour. Because they really are different. But um, I will take the bronzer like I did tonight. And I will just grab the brush go into it, I might as well put a little bit more on. And again, I find if I take that contour and rub it into the brush, it just doesn't go on where I get a big patch. And then I will go around here, 
around my forehead, under the cheekbone, and then onto the jaw. And I also find that bringing it down the neck will make the neck look better. And that's sort of what I do with the bronzer. Now lately, uh, my daughter sort of inspired me with this. I've been going a little bit on the nose like that. So it looks like I've been hit by the sun because if I go out in the sun, if I were to wear sunscreen, which I always do, but if I didn't, I would get it right on the nose, just like kids do. And B. Walker says, I use two colors, darker on the end and lighter with a light hand. That's what I uh, have tried too doing darker. Um, sometimes I've bought products actually that were too dark and I go, well, I'll just use that on the tail of the brow. So that's a great suggestion there. And um, yes, and she says, find a tutorial on where to begin and end. Yes, they talk about what B. Walker is saying is you're supposed to go, I've got a big brush here. Let me find something a little slimmer here. Your brow tail should be even sort of with the corner of your nose. And then the arch right about here. And then they say the start of your brow should like line up with the edge of your nose. So that's what she's talking about. And I sort of use that as my rule too for applying it. And so, um, uh, Isabel says, it's the colors that I have a hard time with. I, I feel your pain. I have bought so many, and they're not the same in every brand. You could buy a taupe in one brand and a taupe in another, and they're totally different. So once you find the one you like, Isabel, I would stick with it because I have wasted a lot of money over time trying different brow products that just weren't the right shade and looked pretty ridiculous on me. So I can feel what you're saying there. Um, so uh, thank you all ladies for coming tonight. It has been such a joy being with all of you. Now, again, anything I talked about tonight is linked underneath the video. This goes, the video goes live immediately after we're done with our live stream. So if you want to go back to the video, if you want to re-watch any parts or any products you're interested in, you'll be able to do that. And again, on Saturday, I have a whole video on beginner tips for eyes. And I think that's one of the most problematic areas for those of us that are over 50. And so I've been really excited to do this video because I get probably the most questions about eyes than anything else that I talk about. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, I just hope that all of you have a blessed and beautiful rest of your week. And I thank you again for coming tonight, and I'll see you soon. Have a great night.